Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be back making a video today. I'm trying to stay on my game. So today I wanted to come on here and talk about the top 11 concerts I've been to this year. Yes, I had to do 11 because I couldn't narrow it down to 10, but let's do it. Ever since concerts started happening again, since the pandemic, I have just been taking advantage of going to shows and seeing my favorite artists. And the sponsor of today's video is Vivid Seats, who is a ticketing app where you can buy tickets to these concerts. And I'm so excited to be working with them because they're a platform I'm always searching for tickets on when I'm trying to find the ticket to the show I really want to go to. So let's get into it. Starting at number 11, Ethel Kane. I I can't. I, I love her so much and when Preacher's Daughter, her album, came out, I had not really listened to her previously and I was just recommended to listen to the album and I'm not even kidding when I say I think it changed my life. It's just like these beautiful nine minute long ballads and there's a huge story behind the album that you should definitely get into and check out and I have just been waiting to see her ever since I heard the album and I saw her a few weeks back at Bowery in New York City. The only reason that this is not higher in my list is because I got there pretty late, it was really crowded and I was on the balcony with like a blocked view and this person behind me wouldn't stop talking so it was kind of like ruining the experience. But if I could have it my way, I would have been in the front row just listening to her beautifully sing to me and I would have been the happiest ever. But go listen to her, please. Thank you. Number 10 is The National. Oh my God, I was blown away. I just got tickets to their show because my mom and her boyfriend were going. Her boyfriend's a big fan. I started listening to The National during the pandemic, obviously hopped on even more when I heard about Aaron Desner producing for Taylor Swift. And I haven't really listened to their music enough to really know like the difference between the albums and you know, but just as a very casual listener, liked their music. You know, I was expecting them to be good, but like I wasn't expecting to be blown away. But like you can tell that this is such a talented band and they are OGs. They've been doing this for like 20 plus years. It was two hours long, like two hours. Every song is like a beautiful rock ballad and the way that they build and like the energy was just immaculate. It's really something I wouldn't have expected when listening to their music on streaming. I just feel like hearing them live is a complete game changer. So if you have the opportunity to ever go see them, you must. All right, at number nine is Miss Dula Peep, um, Queen. We all know she slays. Her concert was so much fun. It was a whole production. Like, you know, Miss had the whole thing planned down, second by second, minute by minute. Like, it was almost like there wasn't enough time where she just like interacted with the audience but you know what she was there to perform and that's what she did end of story at number eight we have Lil Nas X oh my god I wasn't expecting to be able to go see him but thanks to Vivid Seats I was able to go see him and I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to go because now that I've seen it I would have been really mad if I had missed it. So through Vivid Seats, I was able to buy Lil Nas X tickets, even though the show was technically sold out. The best thing about Vivid Seats that other ticketing platforms don't have is their rewards program. So basically they have a point system, like, you know, rewards with anything else, with different stores and restaurants and fast food, stuff like that. So basically the promotion that they have is that when you buy 10 tickets, your 11th one is free. If you're a huge concert goer like me, that could be something that's really beneficial to you where you can end up going to see one of your favorite artists for free after, you know, supporting them so much. They also gave me a code, Amanda10, 
that you can use at checkout if you're a new Vivid Seats member or user and you can get $10 off any order over $100 which can also be a great way to save on concert tickets. Vivid Seats is really easy to navigate. You just look up the show that you want to go to and they show you which sections are available, where there's tickets being sold, the different prices, how I get concert tickets sometimes. If concerts are sold out, I will go to a platform like Vivid Seats to find a ticket to that show so I can go even though it's technically sold out. There's always an opportunity to find tickets and Vivid Seats is there when you need it. And the best part about Vivid Seats is it's a 100% buyer guarantee. If the tickets you ordered are not the right ones or they don't come through, you will get your money back. And this is why I'm so happy a place like Vivid Seats exists so that you can get tickets to your show and if something goes wrong, you're 100% guaranteed. It's better than buying from that person off Twitter. Like, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Number seven is the love of my lives, Magdalena Bay. Oh my God. The way I love them, the way they never make a bad song, the way that that was one of the most fun concerts I have ever been to, I just can't. I really love the visuals at the concert. They really hone into that like dream escape world, um, synth pop, you know, spacey, universal craziness. Like the way they dress, the production. Mika crowd surfed and it was just like the most amazing vibe. Like, it was just insane. At six is my homegirl Billie Eilish. My girl Billy, she's been my homegirl for a long time. I first saw her at GovBall. Amazing time, but you know, not being in a sweaty crowd of people on top of each other and seeing her at MSG is a lot more enjoyable of an experience. Billy is a performer. It's just in her bones. She just gets on the stage and tears it up, and that's just her. Her vocals are amazing. She will literally just jump around stage, do whatever she wants, like has so much energy, totally wants to be there, interacts with the crowd, amazing. Seeing Happier Than Ever Live is an experience you can't get without just going to her concert and seeing her do it live. Like, you just have to see it. My favorite thing is that she played No Time To Die and Bored. I'm so bored. I just love, uh, I'm just, I'm a fan, I'm a fan. Go see her. All right, this is where my crazy Sagittariusness comes out. Cause number four is none other than 100 Gex. When I first listened to Gex, I was like, what the hell is this? I cannot listen to this. What is this? Little did I know I was going to become a hyper pop fiend and I love them. I've been to three of their shows, but the one I'm talking about in particular is night two of their Terminal 5 show in December of 2021. We're going to count that as this year because it was basically this year. Oh my god. Every time, every all three times, it doesn't get boring. It doesn't like every time it's freaking amazing. It's like my soul is coming out of my, it's like actual projection. Like I feel like I come outside of my body. Dylan and Laura know how to put on a show. Production is insane. I, like for some reason, their stuff just sounds a thousand times better live. And it's so mesmerizing to watch them do what they do up there even if you don't like hyper pop i would say just like try going to a show and like see if experiencing it that way makes you like it more because i can't imagine i i mean i know there's people that don't like this stuff but like i can't imagine not liking it i just can't at four we have miss charlie xcx my queen, everyone's my queen, but like, she's, she's up there. Charlie, I'm gonna say it right now, way too underrated. Underrated queen of pop. She comes out with the most original 
pop, hyper pop music. She deserves to be at the stardom level that like Ariana, Gaga, Taylor all are. Why she's not? Tasteless people. I don't know. Charlie knows how to put on a show. I first saw her on her How I'm Feeling Now tour, like the few shows that she did post everything opening up from the pandemic. And then I saw her for the Crash Tour at Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City. I I just levitate with Charlie XCX and that's that's all I can say. And seeing Vroom Vroom live, oh my god. Don't sleep on my girl. End of story. At number three, we have my mother. Miss Gaga. This was my first time seeing her. I just had to go. I really love Chromatica. I really love her old stuff even more. Art Pop is my favorite album, then I'd say Born This Way. Gaga is literally born for this. Like, she is a performer. She puts on her show. She interacts with the crowd. She's so genuine. She is the show. Like, that's just... All it is. Number two is the VMAs, which I did not expect to be able to go to this year, but I got last minute pretty inexpensive tickets. So I was like, I'm not gonna give up going to literally the VMAs because who knows what iconic moments might happen there. Anyway, it was the coolest experience ever to be able to see, like we were sitting right in between the two stages and the one in the front, like, the countdowns for the commercial breaks, seeing where all the celebrities sit, seeing all the performances being set up, and like being able to see that many performances in one night. It was just so, so cool. And of course we know Miss Swift announced her new album. So like I literally was able to experience an iconic moment in history, which was insane. I was with like two of my Swifty friends and we heard, like, we started to know where the speech was going. Like, she was like, since you guys were kind enough to give this to me, I thought I would give you. And then we're like, freaking out, like, slapping each other, standing up, like, screaming, like, oh my god. And I thought she was going to announce a re-record, not a whole new album. Anyway, Midnight's out very soon. And last but not least, we have not only my favorite concert of this year, but I might just have to say the best concert I've been to my entire life. I don't know if anything will ever top this experience for me. And that is the Weekends After Hours Till Dawn Tour. Oh. My. God. I still don't think I've come down from the high of that concert. This was also my first time seeing The Weeknd live. I've been a fan of his for a really long time. The production was insane. Like it was just, it felt like you were in Gotham. The set design was so cool. The dancers were amazing. Like I loved how weirdly creepy it was and it was, oh my God, it was perfect. Like I love, I live for that stuff. Um, and the lights like were insane, like it just, felt like you were like in a different moment in time for like the entirety of the show and his vocals are insane he's an amazing performer i've been a fan of him for so long and i was so happy to finally see him it was fantastic so yeah that is my top 11 concerts of this year so far i know the year's not over but i that's basically a majority of my favorite artists that I've gone to see. I still have some stuff coming up towards the end of the year, but no, I can always add it later. Check out Vivid Seats for concert tickets. Sign up, use Amanda10 to get $10 off your first purchase of $100. Get into the rewards program so that you can get your 11th concert ticket free. If you have the opportunity and it works in your life, you should definitely go see the people that you really love and maybe regret not seeing. Love you all. Subscribe for more videos, more content. I'm here to talk about music all day, every day. And yeah.